surface. Uh, and you know, the, the image generate generation bit, I think we made a good call, even though we didn't have very well organized thoughts on the last podcast to Mm -hmm. audible at the last minute as, as angsty (laughs) as it made you just to call out, look, this is a big deal. Like what is happening is important. It's worth making a point at the top of the podcast that this is a viral moment, that this is, this is going broadly. And it is striking how images it's not a new observation. Like it's a point that I've been making for ages, right? The difference from text and then text to images and then images to video and then Mm -hmm. video to 3D. This is the natural progression of technology. And what we see consistently is at every step, more and more people are sort of intrigued and brought in and, and get it. And that's what we're seeing with AI. There was the, the, the thing about, about chat GPT's, image capabilities people suddenly seeing oh ah it's not just generating stuff i can actively manipulate this image in a very predictable way in a way that's useful is like yes you could that's theoretically the see yeah. this was coming but i think for a lot of people it's a big light bulb moment and yeah the the, the part we talked about uh, last time that for a lot of people changing images they already know grabs them much more than the ability to generate images from scratch. So again, it has mm-hmm. lots of interesting <laughs> implications if you think through it, but just from a, you know, in generating demand, it's just, so, it's much more accessible. You don't need to be creative to suddenly see the value and to have that light bulb moment. There was a tweet I just sent you like one minute before we recorded. So I don't know if you saw it or not, but it, I, I saw I just, it. It was like a 20 part thread. <laughs> so I got the gist, but I may have missed some details from real yeah. estate Trent. Yeah. The, well, I mean, it's, so I, I, one of the great things about X is you could just like kind of randomly follow weird angles of the economy. So this yep. is strip mall guy uh, <laughs> at real estate Trent on X. I have no interest in strip malls. We'll never invest in them, but he tweets, interesting things on occasion. So I guess I follow this guy again. uh, Who knows how I ever discovered it, but he had a really, I think compelling tweet thread about he buys old strip malls, renovates them, and then basically, you know, either flips them or can charge much higher rents than he did otherwise, right? A very classic real estate play. And he was talking about the biggest frustration and difficulty in this process and a huge amount of sunk working capital is in the months after you acquire a property and you're trying to figure out what to do with it. And you're trying to Mm -hmm. get someone to give you designs and you don't like that in different designs and do this. And he's like, I just bought this property and already figured out what we want to do with it over the weekend because we could just try different materials, try different things using the chat GPT because you can be so specific. Take this image, change it to this, do stucco, do wood, do this kind of roof, do X, Y, Z. And, and now you've massively compressed this huge time period that was not only took a long time, but also was unsatisfying because you felt like you never really got what you wanted. But at some point you're just like, we can't go back and forth this on this forever. We can do. Yeah, that's exactly. right. And, and, and it was, I thought it was a very interesting thread because he's like, look, I have a fiduciary duty to my investors to do this from now on. Like there, right. it, it saves so much time and money. And again, this working capital point, I think is a particularly important one. you, spent money on this property that's just sitting there for months where you're trying to figure out how to redesign Which it. Now it can be ideas, deployed much. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's like, but it suddenly dawned on me. This is really bad for the people that I'm doing this interaction with, because like it, it's economically, it's not justifiable for me to go through this process anymore. I'm going mm-hmm. to give them close to final designs, at least from a, a design pr- perspective. And we'll iterate on that. And I, I think, and again, you could see this coming if you squint it, but there's something about it becoming very, very tangible that, that, you know, totally makes it, well, makes and it I lo- said that on the last show, people. it's, it's sort of like a deep research part two situation. Yep. Um, the show last week was so funny because in retrospect, I was much sicker than I realized and <laughs> going into it. Um, I can tell talking to you right now. You were definitely in a funk. <laughs> I feel so alive here on Sunday night. I thought we were going to be focused more on like what that Trent thread lays out and focus more on images and GPT and 
what that level of precision means across various industries. But then we started and we were focusing on the Studio Ghibli, Ghibli. viral trend. Ghibli. Oh, is it Ghibli or Ghibli? <laughs> oh, right. No, I might have screwed it up. Again. It's probably it's Ghibli. Ghibli, Ginobili, whatever it is. <laughs> um, and you just wanted to meditate on that. And I was like, how are we going to get an hour out of this? This is basically just an Instagram filter. I don't really know what the big deal is. And, um, and the images with GPT and, and that level of precision, yeah, that's going to be disruptive ac across all kinds of industries. But I think you, the example of the strip mall guy uh, is a great example of where, you know, mock-ups that used to take weeks to generate and were expensive to generate can now be done in a matter of minutes and it gets, it makes his business a lot more efficient. And that's yep. what's possible in all sorts of areas. I know, we can still meditate. Week. We can still meditate on Ghibli. I like. I like. I predicted. Sure. <laughs> I, I think some of our readers got very mad at you about uh, yeah for for did, not just not having higher. seen Studio Ghibli <laughs> movies, but then insulting people who like them. Just yep. I mean, yeah, sick <laughs> and lashing out, <laughs> disgusting exactly. behavior on your side. Look, I my defense is that I was in a stupor and had no idea why all that showed up on no, my Twitter. And I was out we of it too. Yeah, it. it was. Yeah, look, <laughs> let let the audience know we're we're missing a couple episodes, but that's because we're giving it all to you the rest of the time. So that's there you right. Go. We're leaving it all on the floor every single podcast. Yeah, um, the big difference right. is that Jordan won his flu game, so I'm just I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> just struggling through. <laughs> uh, you were supposed to be the Jordan on that episode, but we were just sort of piecing together thoughts in real time. In any event, following up to that discussion, we also got this note from Mitch. He says, Ben, as someone who's been following AI image generation over the past few years, I was amazed at how the recent launch of OpenAI's autoregressive auto -regressive image generation made much of the open source tooling ecosystem around image generation feel redundant. That ecosystem hinged on the idea that there were areas of weakness for AI that required scaffolding and support from various other tools, workflows, and plugins. Now, not so much. Should we expect this pattern for all AI-adjacent products? As foundation models approve at such a rapid pace, how durable are the business models of startups built around tailoring those models towards specific use cases? If general purpose models keep getting better, fast enough to absorb many of these use cases natively, do these moats, do these kinds of moats just evaporate? It feels like a broader version of the bitter lesson that you described in the context of self of self-driving cars. Does any AI adjacent product have a moat? I'm curious how you're thinking about this. I'm curious too, Ben, do you have any answers for Mitch? Well, this is, oh, I think, one of those ongoing. So th there's been a bunch of ongoing debates that that yo-yo back and forth. You referred to one earlier with Grok, which is our model. Is this just a pure commodity? If you just spend money, do you get the, like a leading edge model? Grok suggests, yes, maybe you do. And then that's one of my takes for why OpenAI actually needs to. The product differentiation is a big deal and is actually what they need to focus on because, you know, maybe the models aren't. That, but, but the flip side of this is. There was like, well, I guess AI rappers are actually good. It's like, well, maybe not <laughs> because mm -hmm. the, the AI models get so much better. People forget this happened the first time around with, with chat GPT, with, with GPT-3, and then GPT-4 just kind of swallowed a bunch of would-be use cases. And, you know, there's a question about that with, like, say, the coding stuff, right? Quad was the the model for coding. You mentioned cursor sort of earlier. And now they're trying to push their own coding product, uh, you know, and is that going to actually end up being more compelling and can they do more interesting things? And does sitting on top of that, is that actually a useful and sustainable place to be? Uh, it's probably going to be pretty context specific and, and about what works what and what work. doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you're, you're, I would say on one hand, there's going to be need to be a lot of old school product development where you go in and you really understand the end user and what they need and you build a product that solves their problem that happens to use AI. And mm -hmm. probably a lot of these products start with AI and what could we do and do stuff on top of it and then they try to go find customers that need it. And the problem is if you're starting from AI, you're starting from the model, potentially just doing what you did. Like you're kind of totally. like, you're starting from the wrong direction. Uh, 
Now, now, is that going to be a cure-all? Not necessarily. Like, are these, you know, and I think this is one of the big questions, are these models just going to do everything in the long run? And anything built around them is just going to get swallowed up. I, th- You know, again, I think it's it's probably to be determined, probably the more niche your application is, the better you're going to be. And what you're seeing, I suspect, is what we always see which is this barbell effect. You have mm-hmm. these large platforms the, that end up serving 80% of the the, 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 the problems at a good Needs enough rate. Cases. Yeah. yeah. And and now, even if OpenAI sticks with subscriptions, it's like, well, you subscribe to OpenAI anyway. So you might it's like the Microsoft Office thing. You already subscribed to Microsoft Office. Might as well just use Teams. If they go to ads, it's even more compelling because then it's free. Like, why would you even bother trying anything else? And... You know, it, it, and the other thing's funny. We had a we had a, a friend is like, he's like, oh, I'm so jealous. He was like, he's like, oh, he's is because the, you know, th- their servers were so on fire with this Studio Ghibli uh, Ghibli stuff that mm-hmm. I think it is Ghibli uh, that it's not in the free tier. And so I sent him a couple. He's like, oh, I'm so jealous. I'm like, you can subscribe to this. It's like, I don't, I don't see the value. Blah, blah, <laughs> I'm all blah, blah. set. It's like, it's like, I mean, the reality is we're making so- fun of this friend for being cheap. Is that right? Yes. No, but, yeah. but it's funny. It's like people, when I'm, someone shows me a YouTube video and an ad cuts in and I'm like, you don't need to live this way. Like I respect <laughs> for a lot of people, like they can't afford YouTube premium. I'm like, you can, this is ridiculous, but whatever. It just goes to say, goes to show if there is a free alternative, lots of people are going to be fine with that. Um, but you have this 80, 20, and maybe it's 90, 10 or, or whatever it might be. That leaves. Number one, a relatively small market for everyone else. Mm-hmm. And who serves that market? Is it going to be large VC funded companies? Maybe that maybe that's like the sort of the SaaS sort of market idea. There's lots of companies that got funding and they have sales teams and they they but I think one of the reasons why SaaS produced all the companies over the last 15 years in Silicon Valley, and there's really been no big consumer company since Facebook until OpenAI gets at this point like there's consumer opportunities but they're super small and cost yeah. structures have to be very small like stratechery like now stratechery is some to some extent you know it's an industry publication people subscribe to it because it's their job there's also a lot of people and certainly this is how it started that subscribe just because they're interested and they want to read what i have to say and that limits my market to some extent but it's totally viable because my costs are very low. I know they're much higher today than they used to be, but especially for the first five or six years when it was only me, my costs were just my time. Mm -hmm. And so I don't need that many subscribers to have something interesting. And maybe that's from on the consumer side, that will be the play here. This ties into my whole Apple bit where they're uniquely enabled to unlock these sorts of opportunities and running on their platform. John Gruber posted a, a comparison of uh, OpenAI generating uh, Lego figures as severance characters versus Apple Intelligence doing it. And the Apple Intelligence ones, like they they look like Lego characters. They don't have any connection to severance. Uh, right. And it looks bad, right? Because Apple using on-device inference is being cheap, mm-hmm. but that's very different than developers have access to free inference. They can experiment and do stuff. And by the way, if you're just one person or two people or three people, you don't need to find that many customers interested in your use case to build a viable business. Now, is that a VC scale business? Maybe not, but I don't think Shotekery is a VC scale business either. And I have a very nice living sort of coming from that. And, and, and you know, that there's Facebook all the way on their stat. And then everyone in the middle is kind of stuck in the middle of nowhere. So is that how it will play out with AI? Maybe AI just eats everything. That's possible. It's also, I think, reasonable. Everyone everywhere is learning the bitter lesson the next 20 years. That's right. But but then again, maybe it's this will, it's not a bad thought to think that it's going to play out like other, other revolutions in tech have played out. Now, with PCs, the number of monster companies and the number and the viability of small operations, like there was more room in the middle and it got Mm -hmm. more extreme online. 
and maybe AI gets even more extreme where you have to be really, really small or really, really, you're going to be really, really big. That's possible. The barbell is going to continue, but the extremes are getting larger. Maybe that's probably the way it's, it's, it's going to play out.